that encourage you, strengthen you, and bless you. He got a word that got some power. See, my word ain't got no power. And I got news for you, yours don't either. But his word got power. See, that's the company we want to listen to his word and trust in his word and let his word do what no one else can do. Then he made some promises. And you know what I love about our guy? The promises he made to the king. Amen. And as we think about all the promises that he made, that he is going to fulfill, we can have peace, joy, and love in our lives. Because we know we serve a God that cannot lie. Two innumerable things about God. One, he can't lie. And the other one is he gives hope. that no matter what, we'll be able to get through. He will bring us through our situations. Brother Arthur, how are you today? Thank you, the Lord, tonight, brother. Amen. We, we thank God for Jesus. Would you open us up with a word of prayer, please? Lord God, we truly thank you tonight for your mercy and your blessings and your goodness and your presence, Lord, and your blood. Lord, we thank you. We thank you again, Lord, that you have a word that has power. Lord, because if your word didn't have power, where would we be? Lord, God knows. Thank you. So glad that your word has power to do what you say it's going to do when you send, send it forth. And we thank you so much. You wrote it down in the scriptures, and you got in the scriptures and said, I know I come in the Bible book to do that will. The Lord knows the only reason why we're here tonight is because you're doing your will according to what your word said. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for including us in your plan, Lord. Because you said you're going to have some people in the earth that praise you. But Lord, you've given us a lot of reasons to praise you for. Thank you. More reasons to praise you than not. And I thank you. The, just the others just getting drowned out. It's just all is yea in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just praise you tonight. We thank you. We have so much to thank you for, Jesus. And we're going to, we want to thank you some more. you got to teach us how to thank you. Lord, you're doing so much for us. We got to learn new ways to thank you, Lord, because you're worthy. But thank God you want to do that for us too. Lord, I thank you for, for your wisdom. Lord, we thank you for your precious understanding, Lord, of your word, Lord. Lord, you just it just makes our it just makes our life so much easier. Father God, thank you for healing our bodies, for strengthening us, for thinking about us, Lord and doing the things that we need to be done so that we can walk this walk with Because, Lord, we couldn't walk without you and the things that you do for us. The healing, the blessing, loading, up, loading us daily with your benefits. Lord, we just praise you for, 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 for your word. We thank you for the word that's going to come forth tonight. Anointed, bless it, Lord. Let it have its way in us that you, that you would get the glory, Lord. Lord, anoint the speaker and speak the words, Father God. We know the hearers to hear the word and let, let, the, let everyone online and everyone in the building be blessed. And we just want to thank you for this night, which you're going to, which, which you're going to tell us and show us, and Lord, and let us feel your presence. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Any songs, any praises, any testimonies, please feel free. Morning. And I want you. Okay, go ahead. I'd like to thank God for the church. And my wonderful family who remember me on my birthday. Amen. Amen. And I forgot to tell everybody that it is what Sister Francis' birthday, the 18th. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Be in your prayers, please. Yes. Amen. 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 Jesus saves. Jesus saves. From the cross to the grave, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus 
No matter what you are, Come on, Jesus. who you are, if you are chosen, he said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And you are it. He is the God that calls things that are not as though they were. His word changes everything and anything because he has all power. That's why he don't want us judging nothing. We ain't got no opinions about nothing and nobody because he got all the say and all the opinions. He, it's his kingdom. If he say, you in my kingdom, no matter who you are, you in his kingdom. Because who asked him what he doing? Nobody asked him. Any other songs? Any other testimony? Please feel free. I want to thank God because I saw Sister Francis today. Praise God. Ain't nothing like that love of Jesus when you see somebody else that got that love. Yes. You know, that, that just lifts you. Yes. You know, as you look all around, as you look all in the world, you see all these people with all, and you understand why they ain't got all the sadness and all the sorrow and all these problems. And we got problems and we got sorrows and we got sadness. But the difference is we got somebody we can give them to. Jesus. See, we ain't got to keep them. We ain't got to try to solve them. All we got to do is take them to that throne, get them. Throne of grace, we, we can connect by just getting on our knees, by just thinking in our own minds, giving our prayers to the Lord. And you know what? Because He heareth our prayers. And by His mercy and grace, He answers our prayers. And He got the power to lift them powers off of us. So we don't have to be worried and upset and all aggravated about what's going on in the world. Because I got news for you you can't change nothing. No, you can't. But He can change everything. So let's just give him the glory and praise and thanks to him for coming in our lives. You know, because everybody ain't got that privilege. Everybody ain't got that blessing. Everybody, he didn't choose everybody. He said he didn't come to save. He, he got the power to save the world. But guess what? He only going to save the ones that he chose. And he chose us. That's why we need to praise him. Amen? Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you thanking you, praising you for your goodness, mercy, and your precious blood, Lord. We thank you for your praises of your songs and testimonies, Lord, and all the things that you've done and put in our lives, Lord, to let us know that you, you love us, Lord, and you care about us, Lord, and you are there to help us in each and every way and each, with each and every situation that we might be in. Lord, we ask that you might bind up anything that's in me this day, Lord, that's not of you, Lord that your word might come forth, that it might encourage the people, Lord, it might strengthen the people, Lord. And it might bind up any of the problems and any of the fears and frustrations they might be going through this day, Lord. And that you might anoint them and break those powers and let them know that you love them and that you, you are with them and you're going to bring them through everything for your glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we ask that you might cover us all in the blood and strengthen us all by your spirit. And word us all by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise God. And the title of this message is The Exceeding Great and Precious Promises of Jesus. You know, the Lord sent his word to tell us all the things that he wants to do for his people and how he wants to let them know that he is in their lives. Let's go to 2 Peter. That's 2 Peter. And I want to go to the first chapter. And I want to go to the third verse. And it says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and 
precious promises that by these he might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Jesus has made a way of escape from all the problems, sorrows, sadness that this world has. And even as the song mentioned today, even the fear of death. Let's go to 1 Kings. I'm going to go to 1 Kings. He even abolished death that we might grow into life. First Kings, I want to go to the 8th chapter. And I want to go to the 54th verse. And it is a, a, a praise that Solomon made unto the Lord. And that's the first Kings 8th chapter 54th verse. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people, Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. And let these my words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord God, the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night that he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times as the matter shall require that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God, walk in his statutes and keep his commandments as at this day. I tell you, I just thank God that he's a God that answers prayers and able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Let's go to Luke 24. That's Luke 24th chapter. And I want to go to the 44th verse. Luke 24th chapter, the 44th verse. And he said unto them, These words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the Scriptures. As the Holy Ghost speaks to us and encourages us and helps us through all the situations, trials, tribulations, and things that we live through. And his comforter comforts us and lets us know that he does have power over all the powers of the enemy. Power over death. Power over all the problems in this world. 
and that we can praise you just for being in our lives. We got so much to thank you for. Verse 36, and he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the one that is there to comfort you. That's the one that's there to take of Jesus and show you of the things that he has promised and will bring to pass in your life. And that what he has available for us to help us through this journey in life that we are upon. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he is that power. And Jesus also is that power. So we have a whole lot of power that can help us through our problems. Verse first 50. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them, carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. And that's what he'll do for you as he starts to encourage you and let you know that he's with you and that he has all power over all of the enemy and over even death itself. Let's go to Acts, second chapter. That is Acts, the book of Acts, the second chapter. And we're going to start at the 22nd verse. And it says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself know. And he ain't stopped doing miracles and signs because each and every one of us in this building, on that line, know of the miracles and the signs that he performed in our lives to bring us to this point, to realize that he truly is God and he is the Savior of all men. He didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. And he is saving it, starting with, with us. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. And he is on our right hand and left hand and above us and below us. And he is able to make us that we will not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. David had praises for God. That brother was praising and thanking God because he knew God was with him. And he had experienced enough things from God to know that God would never forsake him or leave him. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Just his presence alone is enough to make you joyful and happy and thankful because he is the power that is over all powers. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he both is dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us until this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus 
hath God raised up, whereof we are all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. And we are blessed to also see and hear of all his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his love, and his power, and the results of having him in our lives. Verse 34, for David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. And he is putting down all of the foes that are in each and every one of our lives, and all of the enemies that are in our lives that have tried to destroy us. Jesus is putting them down, and he is going to set us at the table with them and have peace with them. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And aren't you so glad he called you to come and receive the Comforter, which is able to comfort you and keep you and protect you and watch over you. And he himself even said, I will come unto you to bring the fruits of the Spirit in my life into your life. Let's go to Romans, fourth chapter. Romans, the fourth chapter. What shall we say? First verse. What shall we say then that Abraham our father is pertaining to the flesh and his family? For if Abraham were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. You know, I just thank God so much for his, his confirming stuff. Like Audrey has said, if Jesus said you it, you it. He called you. He chose you. He justified you. He glorified you. He is going to do everything in your life. Because he promised it, and he's able to do it. For what said the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But unto him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Mm -hmm. Jesus' sacrifice was the sacrifice, the only sacrifice that was ever accepted by God. But that sacrifice has the power to bring anyone that trusts and believes in him. And he chose into his kingdom. And he chose whom he chose to be in his kingdom. Saying, blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that Faith was reckoned unto Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was circumcised or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised. That he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised. 
that righteousness might, might be imputed unto them. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet been uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made none effect, because the law worketh wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. For therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations, before him who he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according that was which spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered his, not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Jesus was raised up and has the power to bring, into, bring anyone that he has chosen into his kingdom and give them the forgiveness and the love that only Jesus Christ has in their life. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. And I want to go to the first verse, 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. I want to go to the 18th verse. And that was mentioned in the prayer, the scripture. But as God is true, that's 2 Corinthians, first chapter, 18th verse. But as God is true, 2 Corinthians, first chapter, 18th verse. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you, by us, even by me and by Sylvanus and then Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us is God who has sealed us and given the earnest of his spirit in our hearts. And that's why we can be rejoicing and praising and thanking God for being in our lives and for helping us because his spirit abides in us, encouraging us and helping us and bringing us through the things that we don't even know how we get to them. But by his power we get through them because he's with us. Let's go to Galatians, third chapter. That's Galatians, third chapter. And why do we get to it? And we want to go to the 13th verse. That's Galatians, third chapter, 13th verse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For as it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. 
that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That Spirit, His Spirit, has the power to give us the joy, peace, and love, and bring forth all of the gifts of the Holy Ghost, and all of the fruits of His Spirit, that we can have the, the, a more abundant life that he promised and grow into the things that he said that he would give his people. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. And I want to start at the first verse. Let us therefore fear, reverence, believe, trust, lest a promise being left of us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with the faith in them that hear it. This word that we are hearing this night, this word that we have been hearing through the Bible, through his word, you got to believe that and trust in that so he can manifest his promises in your life. He will give you that peace. He will give you that love. He will strengthen you and bless you according to his word and take away the fear of death and all those other things that he promised. Verse number three. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter in my rest. The rest of Jesus, of God, is available to us through faith in his word. Let's go to 1 John. That is 1 John. And I want to go to 1 John, 2nd chapter. 1 John, 2nd chapter, and we'll start at the 24th verse. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you, but the anointing which ye have received of him that abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter. Now I'm going to go back to the first chapter and start at the third verse. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue, whereby we are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. God has made a way through Jesus that we can trust and believe in him and grow into a relationship with him. Verse 5, and besides this giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience 
godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us with the fruits of the Spirit so that we might be able to have love, peace, joy, and all of the things that only He possesses even in this present world. But the only way that we can get them is to be trusting in His Word. And He will manifest those things in your life. Verse 9, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. You know, all those anger, envy, strife, all the works of the flesh are sins. All the things that are in the flesh are sins against God because they're contrary to the word of God. He wants to destroy those things in our lives. And he wants to replace them with his fruits of his spirit. So that we can praise and thank him for just being in our lives. But he has to manifest his spirit in our lives. His word has to become the power that helps us. His word has to become what comes to our minds while we're going through problems and situations, while we're going on our daily works and our lives and things like that. It has to be his word that comes to us, that can bring us into that relation. Verse number 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's go to John 3, St. John, third chapter. And I want to go to the third verse. And Jesus answered and said unto him, as he was talking to Nicodemus, and he said, how can a man be born again? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. No, he cannot even perceive that there can be a relationship with God like this that can give you the things that God promised. You have to have the Holy Ghost to even hate and have that knowledge in your mind. Because there's so much corruption, so much sorrow, so much sadness in this world. Satan, has, he is the God of this world. But our God is a God that's greater than the God of this world. He's the God that can take you out of this world and bring you into his kingdom. And give you the power and the joy and the praise that only he has. For verily, Jesus answered and said, And verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he can't even see the kingdom of God. He has no perception, no understanding, no relationship that God can come into your life and do what nobody else can do. Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Because he didn't have the understanding that God can, that man was dead to God because of Adam and Eve's transgression. And Jesus came to make man alive unto him again by, by reconnecting his spirit with him. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. And I believe that's, of course it is, the, the baptism is involved. That represents the death and the resurrection of Jesus but also the washing of the water of the word, which we are getting now. But every time we open up this Bible, every time you read the scripture, this word of God is alive and has power to do everything that is said. Jesus said, Lord, I come in the volume of a book to do thy will, to reconnect man unto himself. And of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. There is an entrance that we can abundantly be entered in. And it's not when you get six foot under. Not when your spirit leaves your body. 
Jesus' the spirit can come into our body where we're alive now by faith in this word. And by that, he will generate and, and bring forth the joy, the peace, the, all the promises that he made. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. And the word of God, God said, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And the truth is in the word and the spirit comes from him because he is a spirit. Marvel not that I say that he must be born again. Don't be trying to worry about or think or try to understand he, how he does it because he God. He just speaks it and it comes into existence. That's, that's what gets you to the point where you say, Lord, I don't know why I feel so good today. I don't know why I ain't sad nor down in the pits because everything around me is down in the pits. But his spirit is up is uplifting and encouraging you, and is, it will encourage you and let you know he's with you and he's able to do it but then you know he said marvel not that i say that you must be born again then he i love this because he explains it the wind blows where it listeth thou hear the sound thereof but he can but cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth so is everyone that is born of the spirit everyone that starts to see Hallelujah. and understand the Lord in their life. They don't know how he blesses them, how he delivers, how he helps us, but we just get the help, Hallelujah. get the blessing, get the deliverance, get the joy, get the peace, get the love. You know, Stephanie was saying how she riding down the street saw Sister Hargis the other today. And it, 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 it rejoiced. Yeah. You know, it, it's a, you know it, he does things and you... And you daily life that just uplifts you. You know, I get a call from my brother or my sister and, yeah. and praise God, it just is uplifting. Yeah. You know, I, it, we, I really get, right. we get together like we are right now. It's, it's a blessing to me. It strengthens me. It helps me. It's, it's encouraging Amen. to me. Amen. Verse 9. Nicodemus answered and said unto them, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said to them, Thou art a master of Israel, and knoweth not these things. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witnesses. If I had told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? He's just telling you what's available down here that he can do down here. He ain't even starting to talk about what's up there for us and everything what's in, in the, the big kingdom. You know, where he, he we, where we get off this, this, this delivered from this flesh here. Verse 13, And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. He came down to us ants to tell us what he's got available for us. But we got to believe and trust him and let him do it. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 